What's up guys, Derek from ourplacemore8s.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about is minoxidil also a mild antiandrogen? So I posted a lot of videos about how minoxidil monotherapy is a bad idea because you're not gonna prevent androgen induced miniaturization of hair follicles and how eventually you're gonna hit a point even if you have you know, visual gains, you're not actually do anything to offset further loss caused by miniaturization. So despite getting a growth agonist effect that's offsetting the visual loss, just by adding like artificial density essentially, you're still going to progress your male pattern baldness. You just have an extra amount of, you know, artificially stimulated growth that you wouldn't have otherwise, but everything is still miniaturizing at the same rate because there's no protection from any of the testosterone, the DHT, androgens in general. But there's been some interesting data that's come out that sort of put up minoxidil as a potential antiandrogen in itself, which would then lend to the idea that maybe in a monotherapy context, it's actually not the worst thing ever. However, this is what I, I want to get into it first before I give my stance. So this is the main study that always gets sent to me and people ask me, oh, like, why? What do you think about this? It shows that it's an antiandrogen. So minoxidil acts as an antiandrogen, a study of five alpha reductase type two gene expression in a human keratinocyte cell line. So basically it goes through the uh, history of minoxidil and how it was, you know, the conception of it, its mechanisms of action has still not been comprehensively understood. Um, blah, 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 talks about what five alpha reductase does. Um, there's insufficient literature data regarding the interaction of minoxidil and the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. We studied the in vitro expression levels of 5-alpha reductase type 2 in the, a minoxidil treated human keratinocyte cell line in order to elucidate, my favorite word, the relation of these two parameters, cell proliferation assay, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so basically they did this study to assess how minoxidil would affect 5-alpha reductase type 2 gene expression. And if you know about 5-alpha reductase type 2, you'll, well, you're probably familiar with it if you've looked into 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride in your research. So the proposal in this is basically that minoxidil not only has a growth agonist-like effect, but it also acts similar to, similarly to finasteride. So when you dig through the study, it basically gets to the end and the conclusion is there's a significant suppression of 5-alpha reductase type 2 in human keratinocyte cells, although not at the receptor level. Supports the thesis of minoxidil's anti-androgenic mechanism of action. This thesis, together with the literature data on the X-chromosome-linked androgen receptor pathway and the autosomal chromosome-linked androgen-independent pathway in the etiopathogenesis of alopecia it may provide a better explanation of why some patients do not respond well to minoxidil therapy. Although further studies are needed, this thesis may also allow the exclusion of poor responders to minoxidil therapy and avoid a waste of time in clinical practice by identifying probable androgen-independent alopecia patients to some extent. The anti-androgenic effect of minoxidil demonstrated by significant downregulation of 5-alpha reductase type 2 gene expression in human keratinocyte cells in our study may be one of its mechanisms of action in androgenic alopecia, which is not being emphasized well in the dermatology literature. So the first thing to note, guys, is that this is an in vitro study. So in vitro meaning in a petri dish or a test tube, whereas in vivo is in, you know, like mice, um, human subjects, etc. So this is just like cell cultures. On top of that, while it is interesting and may actually hold some, you know, therapeutic promise in that context, the one thing I sort of come back to on this is the fact that minoxidil, when you use it, it has a very potent side effect whereby it induces hair growth everywhere. So oral minoxidil, especially, obviously, because it gets systemic, it's far more absorbed. And utilized one of the main side effects of it is hair growth all over the body now what causes hair growth over the body versus the complete opposite where you get way less hair growth on the body androgens and androgen deprivation so the only side effect i've ever had from finasteride dutasteride like i'm very well tolerated to them in terms of depriving myself of dht or you know, neuroceroid production or, and whatnot up to date, I've had no notable issues. However, one side effect I did have from them is my body hair 
decreased. Like my back used to be pretty gnarly, in my opinion anyway. And when I started finasteride, and then also my dutasteride experiment, especially when I did my dutasteride experiment, it was like half my back hair start, stopped growing in, like completely. When you take minoxidil though, what happens is it increases body hair everywhere. If you use you know, it orally, and if you use it topically, obviously you get a bit of a weaker effect in a more localized area, but the mechanism is still the same. So if you take an oral minoxidil pill, which is supposed to be like the most potent, like if you can inhibit 5-alpha reductase with some of it topically, for example, let's just say you took it, you know, orally, would the outcome that you'd expect for a super potent antiandrogen, and when I say antiandrogen, I mean like if you are inhibiting a sig the synthesis of DHT to a very significant extent, like I'm not gonna classify that just as a 5-alpha reductase inhibitor because you're, you know, trying to g diminish your androgen levels. Like that's, <laughs> you're literally trying to antagonize androgens or prevent them from being produced. So with uh, finasteride, dutasteride, despite being 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, they're essentially like, maybe not the traditional mechanism of action of an anti-androgen, but they, the result of it is significant lowering of your androgen production because of way less DHT. So it increases TAS, but it decreases DHT by a lot. You already know that though. So minoxidil, if it has a potent anti-androgen effect and you take it orally, why would a known side effect be body hair growth or hair growth like anywhere androgen driven? Like if it was this potent at inhibiting 5-alpha reductase and you took it orally, there wouldn't be so many people, in my opinion, getting body hair just sprouting up out of nowhere. Like if it was more, like sure, proportionally, you might have like such a big increase in vasodilation and blah, 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 that you get some body hair that can somehow like overcome a complete like devastation of your DHT profile. But frankly, that's probably not likely. If you take something and it lowers your androgen levels to a significant extent, there's likely going to be some visual representation of that in some aspect on your body. And for me, that's back hair. So if a side effect like dutasteride almost completely took my back from being gnarly to not even needing any management early at all. And like my lower back like literally didn't even grow one hair, whereas prior I used to have to um, shave that part of my back. So as far as minoxidil, again, if it's, a super potent 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, I'd expect the same thing. And it's in practical application, the opposite happens. Body hair grows everywhere. So if it was such a potent antiandrogen, this likely would not be happening. And we'd likely be seeing, you know, traditional antiandrogen like side effects from minoxidil, but we just don't. Like we don't see androgen deprivation symptoms. We don't see DHT deprivation symptoms. We don't see the deprivation of neurosteroids like we do with, you know, like post finasteride syndrome patients um, as a result of 5-alpha reductase inhibition. Rather, all we see are, you know, cardiovascular or circulation related side effects or, you know, there's, and when I say circulation, I guess that would also apply for, you know, like premature face aging and some of these things that they think minoxidil does, which it may or may not do. But at the end of the day, you know, something that is going to be a potent 5-alpha reductase inhibitor certainly is not going to have the opposite effect on body hair growth, in my opinion. So even if it does have some negligible amount of 5-alpha reductase inhibition, it doesn't seem like it's either so minimal that it's not able to keep up with the growth agonist properties of minoxidil, or it's you know just not even notable whatsoever. Because if we're inhibiting DHT to a significant extent, you're going to see the manifestation of that in some capacity, whether it be through, you know, ED, through body hair reduction, through, well, not everyone's gonna get this, I mean, but at least for me, it's a good proxy because I have a lot of body hair, so it's really easy to tell when my androgens are high versus low. Like when I used to blast, you know, like high doses of anabolics and androgens all the time, I would have to nair like once a week to get rid of my body hair when I wanted to get rid of it. And once I started dutasteride for that dutasteride experiment, I just like nuked my DHC but kept my test up, you know, high normal. Back hair totally gone. But then, you know, when you take minoxidil, orally, you get tons of back hair growth, tons of body hair growth, which is not something you would expect from something that's inhibiting 5-alpha reductase. So in my opinion, just based on the fact that you get hair growth everywhere and it's not specific to 
you know, facial hair, body hair versus scalp hair. And the fact that it's just like uniformly growing everywhere just kind of like reinforces the likelihood to me that its mechanism of action is more to do with the circulation component and probably a much more negligible amount on the 5-alpha reductase inhibition component. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you, do you use minoxidil? Did you find a difference on I guess it's hard to say if you had a difference on hair loss prevention when you are, you know, artificially stimulating high levels of growth, which can kind of like visually offset the loss from miniaturization. So, you know, any and all experiences are welcome down below. Have you had any anti-androgen like side effects from uh, minoxidil before? Because frankly, if it was super potent at inhibiting DHT, we'd be seeing like you know, PFS like side effects and minoxidil users. And we just aren't, at least from my experience, I haven't heard of any. So, um, I talked to a lot of people, so, you know, take from that what you will. Let me know if you had a bad experience with minoxidil, um, in regards to low androgen like side effects, you know, like feeling like you're hypogonadal, stuff like that. Feel free to drop a comment, it helps the algorithm. It's much appreciated when you guys do that like and subscribe helps grow the channel obviously when you like it and then subscribe if you want to get notified when i post new videos follow me on instagram at more plays underscore more dates facebook snapchat bitsuit twitter tiktok apple Podcasts, wherever i am if you're listening to the audio on the uh itunes or apple Podcasts instead of on youtube because you want to save your data or whatever please drop a five star rating on the uh apple Podcasts. it helps the algorithm there too and it's very much appreciated when you guys do that thank you guys for watching talk to you soon